TV Pro is a tell like it is, guys. We got a request a video today, obviously. I had to hit up my boy Chris Bumstead, man. We're gonna do a Chris Bumstead review on his last video, getting my gains back, shoulders and chest workout. Now, I've kind of skimmed through this. I'm really stoked to actually do a review on this because I like doing videos on, you know, how to optimize your training, but also do like seeing videos of people doing the things right. So I'm not like, oh, here guys, here's another video. You can watch him do it right again. I'm gonna explain to you guys why he's doing it right. Cause some guys might be like, man, it looks really good he's doing it. And you want to copy these guys who are doing it right, but you don't really know why they're doing what they're doing. This is gonna be dope because I know Chris, well, competed back in the day together. Uh, he's beat me once and I beat him once and he beat me the last time. So he's winner and he's also uh, Mr. Le Classic Physique. So he wins. Damn you, Chris. Good for you though. Anyway, so let's go over this um, chest and shoulder workout. If we can see if he's got anything that can help you with your training, optimize your training, take some of the things that he's going to teach you and apply it to your training and make your training optimal. I think I said optimal like 60,000 freaking times. Anyway, I even sound like I'm with here. I was... You watch Chris Bumps and you start saying stuff like this and stuff. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> say it, sorry, Chris. Anyway, let's go on. Let's start this video up. Let's see what we got. What is up, YouTube? Welcome to this off season's first official gym workout. We're doing shoulders and chest today. I haven't trained chest at all really in three months because my shoulder's been destroyed. But I can do overhead pressing movements and a little chest right now, so I'm gonna try and do it. I'm a pussy right now. I'm extremely weak, so don't hate me. I need some time right to get there. My perfect. So, to get an understanding of where he is, you know, mentally, where he's coming off. He's just won Mr. Olympia again. He's taking some time off. He's a professional bodybuilder, just like myself. And when it comes to giving himself a break, a break is needed. So, he's coming off of a long break. His shoulders and chest aren't where they are at its peak, obviously. And this is how he goes through his training. Now, he's not going to be able to slang and bang a bunch of weights. He has an idea how strong he is, of what movements he can do. So, he's going to pick the right movements that can optimize his training because now for this guy all he's got to do is show up to Olympia claim his title again anyway so we're gonna watch him we're gonna watch his approach to his training his first exercise he's gonna do is dumbbell shoulder press let's watch and see if we have to change anything at all or I can give you points on why he's doing what he's doing so here we go and weights fly up like nothing guys an athlete you gotta remember too Chris Bumstead comes from an athletic background so what I like about bodybuilders I really can relate to a lot of bodybuilders who come from a high level of athletics. I came from a collegiate background of football. I was on my way to hopefully become a pro whatever. Played the highest level I could play at, at my level of football before I become a professional. Going into bodybuilding, we have a different mindset. As an athlete, we always had this kind of thing where it's get the job done. Go and do your job. Your job is part of a collective group's jobs, but you still have your job to get it done. So as a bodybuilder, I like seeing you know us with that background go into and the approach because we can really relate. Anyway, let's see his approach. So not really sure what the rep scheme is here, but so what I'm seeing right now is really good tempo. Now this guy's like, I haven't trained chest in a while. It's been three months, and my chest is whatever. I know the other size, and the dude just goes and throws up 100 pound shoulder press. The good thing about this is you can actually see the difference from a professional high level, you know, Olympian. And his approach to training is something that you want to look at. And being able to see this behind the scenes kind of mentality and work ethic is something that you guys can take home. And really, you want to know the difference between this guy and the rest of the gym, gym star athletes is mindset. There are some guys out there who say, I want to become a classic physique competitor. There's some out there who actually do become classic physique competitors. And then they do become this. Now, he is the best in the world. He is that 99th percentile. But let's be serious, he had to beat some other guys too. Anyway, let's keep going. So anyway, so we're looking at this dumbbell press right now. What I'm seeing is really good tempo. We're seeing a good change of direction when we're going up and down. Now, when I say good change of direction, a distinct change of direction, I can tell Chris is controlling the rep from top to bottom, bottom to top, meaning when he's going down, he's pressing the weight up. When that weight comes down, you see that stretch. He is lowering that weight exactly where he wants it to feel that stretch and then to go right back up. That is a continuous movement he's doing. That is done with purpose. That is intentional moving right there. That's intentional training. He's going to get so much more out of that because he's putting that load exactly where he needs to put that on that lateral head and that front head. More so lateral because Chris is on 
a bench with a back to it. Now, if he didn't, the difference between Chris maybe doing the dumbbell press without a back, he's going to use a lot more of his posterior chain, his rear delts, um, erectors, lats for stabilization. Even though he's in a bench right here, he's still using those muscles to help stabilize, but not as much as he would without. You know, if you're trying to like getting really good width of your shoulder, dumbbell press is really good because the weight is right here. You're continuously putting the weight and that load on that lateral head. Now you're definitely using anterior and the posterior head as well too. But when you're doing shoulder press here and externally rotating, you're getting a little bit of rear delt, but majority of that's sitting here because the weight is sitting right here. Now if we're doing military press or Smith machine, that barbell or weight is brought in front of here. So the initial first press is gonna have a lot more of that interior head. So if we're looking at doing a pressing movement, that's gonna hit predominantly the lateral head of the shoulder, dumbbell shoulder press is the way to do it. Form is great, tempo is great. Like I said, you always wanna have a good distinction and a proper change of direction. We don't wanna go on here, then kinda of do that drop thing. And I see a lot of guys when they do like this, they come down and then the last little second, they kinda of drop and push back up and try and use the momentum. That's also where you get impingements and get hurt. Let's move on to the next exercise. My quad right now, I barely get out of bed. I feel like if it's your first time ever in a gym, just an absolute rookie, 16 years old, you just destroyed. So, kind of a good feeling. Hopefully it means I'm growing, but. Man, I love that. You know, some of the guys, you know, newbie gains or the newbie pain, I like it. It's kind of like my indication of like, hey man, we're still growing. So. For you guys out there who are new and you're like, man, I'm sore. Listen, give yourself a couple days. If you train, say, shoulders or chest two days ago and you're still kind of sore, it's not something you want to basically avoid. That's just part of the growing pains. Now, if you're like four days into it and you're still sore and the muscle group's still sore, then it's like you got to look at your nutrition or your sleep or whatever you're doing to, to recover. So, moving on. All right, his buddy's going now. This is now this is what you want to see. We got partner. You got, we got partner training. His partner's looking like he's lifting the same way he's lifting. A little bit more faster, I think this is probably the editing, but here's what we get. Iron sharpens iron. You bring your partner to the gym, you gotta be serious. Now let me tell you this right now, as a professional athlete, when I train, I don't have fans. I don't have anyone that's with me that's gonna pump my tires at all. People know when you train with myself or mostly anybody like that at that level, that's our time to actually get to work. But at the same time, it's like, I'm not really here to smile and play around and have fun. Like when it's time to work and it's time for this set, let's get serious. And I like seeing this type of camaraderie and the fact that here's a professional athlete at the top of his game and his training partner who's not even near close to his level, obviously trying to raise the bar for his partner to get better. That's how you do it. That's how things should look. So this is why I want to do this video so you guys can get a good example of this is what you're supposed to look like when you train. Let's move on. Good, so force reps, good. Now this is awesome, I want, this is really good to see. His partner is doing force reps. If you're gonna fail, fail correctly. And here's what I mean. Those force reps should be force reps where you look the same way. Like you're like, you know, you're trying to push um, a roof and you're pushing it and then it gets lower and you, uh, but you're still trying to push it. It's not like, uh, uh, and you're losing your form and you're trying to do this winky wonky shit. That's how you do force reps. What's a force rep? The force rep is gonna bring you past failure. Like you're already failed. You can't even get the rep up. And you're just trying to just squeeze out the last little bit of blood. In the, you're just trying to pump the rest of the whatever is left in there to pump in the shoulder. But you're doing it with good form. Maintaining good form, even in your partials, is crucial. Because if you're gonna do partials, don't waste it pulling some other muscles in the group because you kind of get lazy, you just wanna get it up. You still need focus on that part when you're doing partials. Let's keep it up. This is dope. The last four reps were like half reps. Yeah, so, so that's like six reps. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> so last week was the first time me and Axel trained together for like three months or something. And it was the first time he was stronger than me in a few things. And I took it a little personally. So over the last week, we didn't train together and we're back now doing the same thing. And I'm not gonna let him be stronger on me again on this because just can't That is it. You hear that? That is it. That is exactly what I'm talking about by Iron Sharper's Iron.
greatest, 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 greatest,